welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're so glad you're joining us again this week. You know, we're always happy for people like you, people that are interested in what's happening in our cities. It's important for good government that there be a good flow back and forth of ideas and information and questions between city councils and city staff and you, the people that live in the city. So that we're glad that you're joining us again. If you haven't seen us before, each week we'll have somebody on from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area to talk about what are the current and recent things that that city is doing and to tell you about opportunities to get involved. Now, this week, we're very happy to welcome Jim Prom from the Plymouth City Council. It's been a little while since we've had you. It has, I believe about a year or so. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, so we're glad to have you back and fill us in on what's happening in Plymouth. I appreciate you inviting me in to mm. discuss things. And I'll let you introduce yourself <clears throat> out to our wider audience. Tell them a little bit about yourself and how you got on the council. All right, I'm Jim Prom. I'm on Plymouth City Council Ward 4. I uh, just re-elected for a four-year term after serving a full term and one year of another term. So mm. five years on the council uh -huh. and ready to serve her four more. Mm -hmm. How long have you lived in Plymouth? Lived in Plymouth since 1996. Oh. Grew up in Northeast, uh, moved out to California for a few years mm -hmm. and brought, uh, came back to Minnesota uh, to meet, you know, to start a family. Mm -hmm. And so you see a lot of changes in Plymouth as it's got growing to be one of the bigger cities around. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Even since I got here, I live uh, right off of uh, 47 and Pineview and uh -huh. Northwest Boulevard. When I first arrived, uh, it was all farms. Right. And I would take my motorcycle out and just get a, get out of the city. Uh -huh. And now I've got to go a lot farther <laughs> out to 101 before I'm actually out of the city. Yeah. A lot of building. Yeah, when we moved here, uh, we look across 169 and there'd be cows and yeah. <laughs> bales of hay. <laughs> That's our heritage. Yeah, we right. are a farm community. Right, yep. we are. Mm -hmm. Now, I asked you to think about what are the most common questions that people from Plymouth ask you? What are they interested in finding out about? Well, <clears throat> if it's not specific, whether it's uh -huh. event driven like snow plowing oh, right, right. or in my particular ward, the Four Seasons Mall, uh -huh. things in general is they just want they just want to know who to access for ah. what and uh, we have such a good website oh you do that people use the website quite a bit I see quite a bit on next door uh -huh. and I, I invite them to call me or call the city directly and find the right person to their questions right. and I found that our people are very helpful ah. in the city it's and a, we'll put up your name and phone number so people can take that down uh, during the program and we'll put up the phone number for the City Hall too because it is important if you have a question or a concern that you get to the right person. Absolutely. Right. Getting to the right person is very helpful. Right. Now another area that uh, is needing some work is that you're looking into restructuring Plymouth Creek Center. Now Plymouth Creek Center is your recreation center, right? That's right. Or right. one of Plymouth Creek Community center yeah. is our community center. We have right. an area where seniors come. We have the big dome in back right. of the building. Tons of activities are done there. We've got a stage down there and the building itself has a few creeks. And uh, of course, we've added 20,000 people to our city. Ah. So uh, there is some interest in redeveloping right. that and perhaps adding some amenities. We had a study session last summer uh -huh. where they talked about adding a few gymnasiums, oh. you know, because of all the students that, oh, right. you know, trying to find basketball time and mm -hmm. what have you. So we'll be looking at that actually this Tuesday. Ah. This Tuesday up is our next money up and coming where we might actually spend somewhere over $25 million to redevelop mm. that area. And the council is looking at securing state funding for that okay. as it would be considered, again, one of those regional oh, right. facilities because so many people from Come around from the region over, come many to use different it. Cities we have weddings it. there uh -huh. and um, corporations can hold gatherings there. So um, it, would be a, it would be a pretty impressive redevelopment, mm -hmm. if you will, right. of that own building. And we've redeveloped our, uh, park, our, our work, public works department in the last year. Ah. And uh, so we're kind of taking a look at it right, now. Right. Uh, we finished, we're finishing off the Greenway, so this would be another area where Plymouth has got a lot of great parks right. and great facilities, and we're going to do our best to mm -hmm. keep them as, 
as well preserved and upgraded as we do our roads. Now over this past year, you've looked in many different ways to get citizen input on this project. Maybe you can tell us about some of the ways you reached out to citizens. We did, we brought in a consultant group and we, they've done flash polling, okay. internet polling. They pre pre prepared a report basically with over a th couple thousand uh -huh. individual con uh, comments uh -huh. about what people would like to see. So that's helpful. Uh, it kind of um, it kind of uh, helped us see that what we had initially laid out is pretty much what people are want. Okay. So we get the idea of people uh -huh. want people want a lot more than we can uh -huh. actually provide. Right. But by doing this survey, we can kind of group it together and say, okay, what's the biggest priorities for oh, the people right, who are participated? Right. But it really was. It's been. Uh, more helpful, I guess, than just having a public meeting where 20 right. people show up. We had several thousand respondents to yep, this one, which is good. it's a bigger set, a collection set of data than just, mm -hmm. a, a, like I said, a, an evening right. where 20 right. people come in the room. Well, and, and I think it's important for cities to look at different ways to reach out to people mm -hmm. because people complain if they don't get reached out to, but they don't always necessarily respond to a way that you've already used. So using that firm probably helped you reach a lot more people. Yeah, and over the past few years, we set up our own Facebook page. Ah. We've got our own social media person right. there. So we really are trying to engage people mm -hmm. with the technology and the means that they right. like to, because people are busy. Well, definitely. And if they can just send in a little email or something, that's a lot, that's gonna right. be just as effective than if they have to come in, take time off right. to actually and, and then they've had their say in the process Absolutely. of planning. We love people to have their right. say, right. Get a lot more happy people at the end, right? That's the idea. We really need to see what the facility is gonna look like and if it's gonna be able to support all these activities mm -hmm. and whether it's gonna be enough. Uh -huh. You know, if we're gonna rebuild part of a building, we should oh. probably rebuild it with plans on that it's going to be enough right. for the next right. 20, for, 30 for years. For add-ons for yeah. many years. Yeah. Now, last December, there was a report put out of this group that got out of the input. Uh, the report, is it, uh, what is its title and is it on your website? Mm, you got me on that <laughs> one. I don't think it's on the website. Oh, okay. Uh, but it was about Flashpoint. Okay. Uh, uh, Flashpoint was a, a method used uh -huh. for reaching out to people. I'm not exactly sure what the group's name is. Okay. So. Well, if somebody's interested, they can just call City Hall. Absolutely. And they get plugged into Absolutely. the right place like we were talking about a long time ago. Absolutely. They would talk to the Parks Department, Diane. And then Evans. from looking at your website, people can still leave their ideas and input. And I'm going to put this, uh, this email site up there at Plymouth min mn dot gov backslash pccc for plymouth creek center pccc project mm -hmm. so if anybody hearing us has some ideas and think oh i didn't get my input in they can do it that way it's still. not too late to give your input absolutely so where is the planning process on this we'll be meeting this tuesday okay. to be discussing it more in our study session mm -hmm. And then we'll probably move ahead with a feasibility study. Okay. And then after that, we'll bring plans back that we'll have to approve. So uh -huh. probably throughout this entire year, we'll be looking at that, that project. And then you'll have put together uh, what you want of proposals. Yes, it'll be a lot more concrete. By the end of the year. By the end of the year. Okay. So if you do want to give input, this will be a great input. Oh, definitely. Time to, to uh, call the city and and tell us what you right, think. Right, right. That's right. And it's important to hear from people. It is, we have a lot more people to hear from. Oh, yeah. We're close to 80,000 people. And I think people are getting used to following city business on uh, uh, Comcast and websites like that. I, to I, watch your city meetings. <clears throat> and I think so, yep, people can watch our meetings. Right. Uh, in addition, we send out four quarterlies a year. So right. we'll send them out to every homestead. We really do our best to try to communicate with everybody. Oh, and there's a lot of information in your newsletters. Thank you. Because I had looked at one as I was getting ready to have you on the show tonight. Helen Lefebvre does a great uh, job in our communications department. She yeah. really does and uh, puts together. Like you said, if you really are interested, read our quarterly letters right. and you will be pretty up to date. Well, and, and that on those, mm -hmm. if you didn't save it when it got in your mail, because it'll come in your mail, it's all that's on your website too. Absolutely. 
because that's mm -hmm. why I had a chance to look at some of them. The websites, that's the way to right, go, right? Right, right. Yes. Now, your, your 29 city budget is getting going. In 2019, yep. Right. Maybe you can talk a little bit about the various stages that your council went through during the year to set this budget. Well, uh, it started early last year and we mm -hmm. have multiple sessions, study sessions, where we look at each individual department, uh -huh. what they want to do, what uh, types of things are they anticipating. Okay. For example, with our public safety, mm -hmm. uh, last year we talked about the use of cameras, and so oh, we had right. to study that, and we had to see what the, the costs of that mm -hmm. are and, and start budgeting that process, because a lot of different cities are moving in and, and oh, giving definitely. everyone that camera. So it's, each department has their own interests sure. that we have to consider budgeting for that mm -hmm. this year, or maybe a, a, a year to come. And then after that, we coalesce it into a final budget. Uh -huh. uh, we we uh, tell our city manager uh, collectively what what we'd like to see for a, a levy increase, right. which is an increase in the amount of money we're gonna spend. Right. It doesn't necessarily correlate to the increase in your taxes right. because it's divided amongst all the homes and businesses. And when you have a lot of new homes and businesses, uh -huh. makes even if we down. raise right. the levy, you might actually see a decrease right. in your taxes. The, 20, uh, the, the Plymouth uh, portion of your property tax is about 20%. So 20 cents out of your property tax dollar uh -huh. goes to the city of Plymouth. Well, and I always like to make the point that the taxes that you pay on your home go to the city, they go to the county, and they go to the school district, and a few other little small groups. That's so, right. Uh, the city and the school district are the ones that kind of people complain to because they're the closest to them. And other groups of government don't have to do that, right? Well, that's right, and yeah. there's a lot of other things. Uh, I'm on the Bassett Creek watershed, uh -huh. so the watershed money comes out of there right. as well. That's right. dedicated to clean the waters. This is the uh, 50th anniversary of the Bassett Creek watershed, uh -huh. so we'll be doing some things and highlighting uh -huh. some of the things that they've done over the last 50 years. But it, but it is important to kind of know a little bit about what when you see about levies and taxes and mm -hmm. where you're at and mm -hmm. and there are a couple of opportunities to express yourself absolutely nobody likes the fact that their taxes go up right. especially those who are basically on a fixed oh, budget right right and I don't know what to say to that I mean the city is growing right and we have to basically serve all the mm -hmm. people all these new people right we do our best in Plymouth to try to keep that levy uh -huh. as low as possible which means during that process we'd look at a project or maybe some uh, um, capital assets like uh -huh. some big trucks or trailers right. that maybe we were planning on buying for this year and in order to get the 4.9 we might actually put them off a year oh, sure. and say okay do we really need this now uh -huh. that's really the big question right in order to keep that 4.9 levy do we really need this now and those were the conversations right. we've been having all of last year well and then i think what matters to people more is that you're spending their money wisely i would think so and i think that plymouth has done a good job in explaining where that money goes we in, really, a, in, a, in a simple enough way that you can understand it. We really do try right. to make that as transparent as possible. Where does your money go? Right. And again, on the website, it's all right there. Yeah, it's so all we'll, spelled out for we'll anybody look that's interested or yep. concerned about that. Absolutely. Were there any particular areas of your city budget that got increased or decreased? Talking in a general way, not a fire truck in the fire station. Or um, I, I guess a couple of departments got okay. increased. Uh, the fire department. Uh -huh. uh, we uh, are expanding the fire department to add some full-time firefighters. Ah. And we love our part-time firefighters, and we wish we had more of them. We really do. Uh, but we don't. Right. And in order to get our, our times, the time for from when you make the 911 call to when a fire truck actually shows right. up at your door, in order to get those times shorter, we're going to have to have a couple of full-time people to do that so that really expanded the budget oh sure uh, of course the cameras with the uh, right. police that's going right. to expand the budget our parks department we have constant requests for new oh, amenities right, and things right. so those three uh, areas are probably those though. three areas all uh, have to have some increases yeah and those are the three major areas right so what are you right. going to do <laughs> yeah and, and <clears throat> I th that's what I think if people 
know what it's going for and then say, yeah, we, have, we want those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And you may want them, too, to keep up your property values. That's kind of part of the value, that's right? That's part of the that's, whole thing. That's part of the whole thing. Right. Streets, public safety, mm -hmm. and parks. If you can maintain and improve those, mm -hmm. you'll maintain and improve values. We already have great school districts. Right. Uh, we have four school districts in, oh, the, in the city of Plymouth. I'm in two, Osseo and Robbinsdale. Right. But we also have a little bit of St. Louis Park and Wyzetta. Oh, right, so, right. Uh, but they're all doing very well, yeah. and that's helpful. Oh, it and is for, do, for the valuing of your city for businesses and families to move out. Absolutely. Absolutely. It makes it a quality place to live. Well, it is. It's a good area. And that's kind of our, our tagline, adding quality yeah. to life. If we can just stick with that and add quality to life, we'll do just fine. Right. Just stay in that zone. And so the new bu the budget was approved in December into place, and then you'll be starting on the next one for That's the following right. year. That's right. Isn't that fantastic? So it kind of goes on and on. <clears throat> it really does. It yeah. does revolve. And, you know, after doing it a couple of times, you start to take a little bit closer look at different areas. Oh, right. And uh, uh, we're able to uh, meet consensus pretty ah. well in our, that's our, important. with our city council. Um, right. We appreciate the fact that on any given item, you know, two people might not want it, but right. if five people too, that's a clear majority. Right. And then once that's voted on, the rest of us just leave it be. So yeah. if we don't win something, it's not a big deal. You don't hold that, a, right. you know, against right. in a future one. It just is what it is. So we have a we have a really wonderful council. Oh, that helps <clears> a lot. That are mature people. Yep, that helps a lot. It really does. <laughs> <clears throat> now, there's a Housing Redevelopment Authority, HRA, mm -hmm. and a lot of people, including myself, aren't real familiar with it, so I thought we'll touch on it briefly, but there is information on it on your website, too. That's right. Jim Barnes runs our HRA, uh -huh. and we have a, a commission also uh, for that. We own two uh, buildings okay. right down by Lifetime, uh -huh. which we give a subsidized uh, um, rent to. Uh -huh. And uh, one's a senior building and one's okay. another building. But also the HRA uh, uh, takes the pass-through money, the federal money that right. we get, passed through through the county and then given to us for the purpose of Section 8 vouchers right. and other yeah, types. Yeah, because it handles that renting. Yep. And then... We, uh, there's a first-time home buyer loans. There is first-time home, first so home buyer loans. It. That's exactly right. Um, I, there's a lot of specific rules involving this. Right. It's got to be a certain price. You have to make a certain amount of money. So, like I said, there's a lot of rules to it. But if you fall within that right. category, uh, the HRA would be the people who would give you the funds to perhaps put something down on right. your first home. Right. Maybe $20,000. On your first home. Yeah, because it like can help that. with the down payment for the people that qualify. For the people that qualify. And again, you'd want to go on the website right. or talk to Jim right. Barnes, go in, in the city itself and talk to him and see if you qualify. Yeah, because it doesn't hurt to check. Well, that's right. And if you qualify, you qualify. And if you didn't know it was there, you wouldn't check. <laughs> so, so true. We'll just pass that so idea true. along and to the people. that's part of the affordable housing component. Oh, definitely. That every city must maintain some percentage of affordable housing. Right. So right. that fits in within that, uh -huh. that group there. Yeah, that's important. We need to add a few hundred more affordable mm -hmm. homes, which oftentimes are apartments. Right. Because, you know, that, what's right. affordable is 30% of your income. Oh, right, right. And the income's already pretty low. Mm -hmm. So, again, there's some, some rules to that as well. But it's something that all of our cities are working it at. It is. All of our cities do that. That's exactly right. And then there's also home rehabilitation loans. Mm-hmm. So if you've got kind of home that's uh, not in good shape and you want uh -huh. to rehabilitate it, same sort of thing. If you qualify under the rules, you might be given some money to help you put new windows in uh -huh. or, or uh, put a new roof on. Again, what does that right. do? It allows qualified people to come into their first home. Right, right. It fixes it up so it helps maintain the values of the rest of the neighborhood. Right. And that's what the purpose of that program is for. Yeah, because it's important to keep to keep your housing stock up to date. It really is. It and really there is. is help for people depending on their income level and some other qualification things. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. So just to let people know it's there. And then there are, are also home energy audits. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about those? <sighs> home energy audits. Okay, it's when 
because you can get people to come in and check how much how energy efficient your home is and how much heat you're losing I believe there is a tool that they use yeah, and that, that the actually city, will kind of show yeah. whether or not you have insulation. Right. And so that might you might want to use that in conjunction with uh, fixing up your house. Oh yeah, you could easily. So you'll contact the housing department and they'll come out and do an mm -hmm. audit and you'll be able to see, like I said, if you bring mm -hmm. out that infrared gun, right. you're able to see whether or not your insulation has dropped down right. and how you can better insulate. It shows, you know, if your windows are right. really bad, you're losing a lot of... Right. Out of, a lot of heat out of there so it's kind of helpful in that way if you, especially if you're considering uh, rehabbing an older right. home you would want to check into that to see if I'm gonna take off the siding anyway maybe I should go an extra step mm -hmm. and re-insulate and do right. the windows properly. Well, and through the HRA they get it at a, at a lower cost mm -hmm. for the whole process mm -hmm. I think your website said 70 I'm not going to quote it. No, no, I'm just saying I think it does so people could look there. Because there is a cost <clears throat> for them to do it, but Absolutely. it's substantially less. Absolutely. And could provide them with very valuable if information. If I was going to rehab a house, that would be a very wise thing to do. Because uh -huh. you're going in anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So so all of these are things that people can check into to see if they qualify for and if they can use any of these. And it's under HR rate. That's correct. Mm-hmm. And the inf there's a lot of information on your website. A lot of information, right. and if you should have trouble, call your council member. They'll right. direct right. you to the right person. Yeah, they can get If you get don't you get help at the front desk, our front desk people are actually very yeah. wonderful. They're but then they can it. always call you. Absolutely. Because we've given them your phone number. Absolutely. That's what we're here for. Now, I thought we should touch on, because we have a little bit of time here, about winter plowing and parking, because mm -hmm. we're definitely dealing with it right now. <laughs> yes, we certainly are. It's been a bad winter. Uh -huh. It was a bad spring last spring. Right, spring. It was terrible timing for Plymouth because we're in change. We're changing over. Uh, a few people in the streets department uh -huh. retired. A vendor left last year. Uh -huh. And so we're having to train new vendors and new staff people. We've got a lot of cul-de-sacs, over uh -huh. 400 cul-de-sacs. And... Um, it's been tough. Oh, yeah. There's, there's been some learning curve, if you will. <laughs> but it really didn't help was the snow this year. When you right. get that wet snow, turns to ice, right. uh, suddenly get snow on top of it. It's really been uh, not a pleasant year. Right. Uh, Plymouth has been a leader in reducing the amount of salt they've had oh, on their streets okay. over the past few years. We're trying to do it only like at stop signs uh -huh. and stop lights and just trying to minimize the right. amount because right. that salt leaches into the lakes and right. streams and it's, it's really not, not healthy. It, right. But public safety does come first and this mm -hmm. winter was terrible. We had to more than double the amount of mm -hmm. salt that we've had to use just on the last few storms themselves. Now what is the point at which you're going to start plowing the streets? Because that's valuable information that's for people valuable to valuable information. So the old rule was over three inches yep. and now we're down to two. Okay. And the initial plows will go out, they'll clear the major streets They'll try to clear the cul-de-sacs mm -hmm. once so that you can get right. out. And then later in the day, they'll try to get that snow from the middle of the uh, cul-de-sac and push right. it over. And like I said, we're still on the learning curve with uh -huh. that. But Michael Thompson, who was recently hired from Oakdale, he's done a terrific job. Mm. And uh, we're definitely making progress. But it's one of those important things that if, if you're not getting the service that you want in plowing, it's really important for you to call the main number, 509-5000, uh -huh. right. and talk to Michael Thompson or Joe Pullman and say, hey, here I am, and we're not, we're not getting the service, and right. so we can make that adjustment. Oh, sure. If there's an area that's getting poor service, we're going to analyze that and say, now, is this the What's city? Happening? Is the right. city crews doing this? Is this the vendor doing this? Uh -huh. And then we bring it down to the, you know, break it down to the actual people who right. are doing it and try to make that correction. Ah. And that's kind of at the point where we're at right now. Well, and that's good for people out there to know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes they just grumble instead of... Well, they're, you know, <laughs> it's not fun. Right. It really no, isn't when fun it, when getting it up at 6 work, in the morning right. and you have 8, eight inches right. of snow and you're, dealing and and it's not you're trying working. to get out. That's really not fun. This last uh, ice... Oh, yeah. ...basically stayed... I so know. the snow is on top of that, and a lot of people know that. I had to use salt in my driveway for no. the first time this winter, and a lot of it. Yeah. And I just didn't like it, but that was the only way well, of You're going to get up, up and down, the, yeah, right, yeah. right. Yep. And then another thing that people need to know, where should garbage cans be put so it's not going to interfere with the plowing? 
Well, in theory, okay, in theory, we would love it if the garbage cans was just off of the street right. if the plows are coming. So if it's the night before uh -huh. and and you know the plows are coming yeah. through, we'd really prefer that you bring them off get, the get curb. Get up onto your yard. It would be helpful to bring it like two inch, two feet, maybe right. even three feet into right. your yard because they're going to blow that over. Right. It's if you leave them out on the street, and the plow comes around them. Yeah, well, you've what's got a happened? Of That's snow. gonna stay that way, right, right. perhaps, you know, for a, quite a bit of time, right, right. because we're gonna make that initial pass, especially in the cul-de-sacs. Yeah. If somebody's leaving their cans out there, now you've gone around that. If those cans are still there when everyone else comes yeah. to clear it out, well, that might just be there yeah. for a while. So either in your driveway or in your yard next to your driveway, just a couple of feet right, back right. would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. And then you do definitely tell people, don't shovel your driveway snow into the street. Yes. Right. In the same way we don't have people blowing their leaves, leaves into, into the, the street. street. Right. That's why the city of Plymouth does not uh, do any leaf collection right. because we would spend a lot of time. Same right. thing with snow blowing. Uh, have a little common sense and be courteous. You know, everyone who has a big driveway. Mm -hmm. Snow blowers are relatively inexpensive oh, right, right now, the two right. stage snow blowers. Uh, and it's just something that uh, is good to have in Minnesota. Oh, I think a lot so. of us oh. have very fancy cars, your yeah. Audis and Lexuses. Yeah. Okay, $800 for a two stage snow blower yeah. is gonna be able to clear your driveway every time. Right. And uh, you'll be able to get that Audi and Lexus out. And I know from experience that uh, some of those higher end cars are engineered so that when they slip, they stop moving and then oh. they'll start sliding oh, down. Oh yeah, not I don't good. have one. I just know yeah, somebody who does. That could happen, right? <laughs> right. Yep. And then another thing important to let people know is if they have a fire hydrant on their lot, and then they do have uh, a mailbox, keep the mailbox free for the postman. Yep. But keep the fire hydrant. Yeah, we really encourage right. that. Mm -hmm. You never know when it'll happen. It's, right. it's rare, but it's not a lot of effort to just clean out your area there and clean that fire hydrant area out. When they need it, they need it now. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, an extra five minutes of cleaning out uh, to be able to hook up a hose can make a big difference if your kitchen's yeah. on fire. So just kind of a reminder to people. Yeah, it's if a good If it's, it's in your reminder. yard, clear it off, please. Yep, yep. And help your neighbors. Right. If your neighbor's out of town it's and, and they're fire hydrant, like my neighbor is, uh -huh. Get out oh there. yeah, because you know that they that it needs cleaning it, out. Someone's got to do it. Right. Or Somebody it in that whole ring of houses. That's exactly right. Get Keep, to know your neighbors. Right. It's very important. Our uh, night to unite has really been helpful oh, for getting right. neighbors together. Oh, it is. Some of the things I'll talk about is that, uh -huh. and uh, you know, complaints about too many garbage carriers. Oh, right. I encourage people to okay. If there's too many, why don't you as a neighborhood oh, you can, say, right. hey, you know, what's the best deal? Why do you like yours? Why do you yeah. like yours? And then see if you can get down to one or two. We've yeah. got two on my little cul-de-sac. Ah. So it kind of works to talk to oh, your neighbors. Oh, sure. sure it does. You, you can, might bring it down from four or five trucks down to two or three. Mm -hmm. Then it's Well, I want to thank you so thank much you. for I appreciate it. sharing your time and experience with our audience out there. And we will say a good night. Good night, everybody. Mm -hmm.